Job opportunities in computers. Well, this will be of interest to computer graduates. How do they get in? Not here, obviously. <laughs> ah, now this is the discovery. Mm. Very nice bit of carpet here. <clears throat> I find a lot of the uh, carpet around the exhibition is in fact grey. But this, this is a good bit of carpet, this is red. Mm. Very interesting. Now, ah, yes, you see, here we are. This is, uh, this is the usual exhibition grey of this carpet here. That's the normal colour. There's something actually rather interesting. Here. I don't know if you can see this here, this is a, a lightweight telephone uh, dispensed with buttons, there's no wiring, very easy to use. I um, don't know how it works though. Excuse me, I don't, can you tell me how this phone works without any wiring in it? It doesn't work at all actually. Oh, apparently it doesn't work at all. It, it cuts down on the cost of calls. Cuts down on the cost of calls, very useful. You've got a computer over here, which, um, which works on the same principle I see. That's right. Yes. Ah, now this is pretty impressive. Look at this. Nice bit of blue carpet. I'm glad to see they've uh, put, a, put a bit of plastic underneath this car so it doesn't muck up the carpet. Nice bit of blue. There's a little model over here I'd like you to have a look at. Uh, as you can see, they use lots of models around the exhibition. Here we see uh, the office of yesterday. You see he's got problems. He's frustrated. He's doing karate on the desk. He's that frustrated. He's got problems. He's got uh, vans and taxis and motorbikes. Well, he's, sold, he's also got rather bad dress sense, as it happens. Um, if we look at the, the other side, you see he's solved all the problems with a box which says computer on it. And um, obviously all his problems are solved, except, uh, except his dress sense. He's still got appalling dress sense. Notice the uh, corporate smile. Let's have a look over here. Excuse me. I wonder if you can tell me, is this the uh, 15 uh, hard disk megabyte, uh, 15 megabyte hard disk, or is this the 20? Oh, that's a printer, is it? Ah, so, so there's, no, uh, there's no megabytes in that one. No. What about this, this one? Has this got any in it? I don't know. Then, it's disk drive. Disk drive, isn't it? Oh, what, you don't work here? No. Oh, sorry, it was the anorak fooled me, and I thought that was like, you know, the corporate image. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. It's a nice carpet. Mm. Tiles. Mm. Excuse me. Where'd you get that bag from? Oh, right. I was just like, you know, I've been here for a while and I haven't got any bags yet. I think, you know, at an exhibition like this, you've got to get bags. Perhaps I'll get some later. Now, this is interesting here, this stall here, because they're obviously very, being very cautious about their carpet. They've actually boarded it up so that people like me, you know, the riffraff, don't go walking all over their carpet. Let's just have a look inside. Oh, yes. Let's have a look. There's two people in here, and they're, uh, I think, probably, I don't know if they're just, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to be discussing the carpet. Perhaps they're talking about something else. Anyway, as I say, this is, uh, this is a nice, uh, nice, sturdy construction. Very nice. Well built. Wang. It's, uh, it's a computer company. Wang. And the people who work there, they're called the employees. Ah, yes. Carpet here's a bit grubby. Um, excuse me, I wonder if you could tell me um, you know, something more about this monitor system. The, excuse me. Um, Oh, sorry. I thought, you know, that was, but it's not, I, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Ooh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I think there's some good carpet over here. I believe it's, uh, hmm. good luck. Well, the next category in the Rita Awards was Software Product of the Year, and that was won by CompSoft for Domino, their interactive graphic shell package. Congratulations to them. And the next category is Systems Innovation of the Year, and three very interesting finalists here. The RM Nimbus, the One Per Desk from ICL, and the Liberator from Thorn EMI. Now, Mac, you were one of the Rita Panel of Judges. What were you looking for? 
Well, the award can be given for a whole system, part of a system, or even just a peripheral. And this year, all three finalists were, of course, whole systems. So we're looking for innovation that will bring in a whole range of new microcomputer users. And we felt there was only one finalist that really fitted the bill. And the winner I have here is ICL for one per desk. And to collect that award is Andy Roberts. And that brings us to the final award, which is for Personality of the Year. Now, this award is given to the individual who, in the opinion of the judges, has made the most outstanding personal contribution to the computer industry in the UK. And the three finalists were Mike Fisher, the MD of Research Machines, Alan Sugar, the Amstrad Chief, and Roger Foster of Apricot. Whether it's the smile, the product, the balance sheet, or the total package, the winner of the 1986 Personality of the Year Award is Alan Sugar of Amstrad. <laughs> well, throughout the show this week, visitors had the opportunity of pledging money to Online Aid, which is the computer industry's contribution to the African Famine Appeal. The two journalists, Claire Gooding and Paul Walton, who thought up online aid, were also honoured at the Rita dinner with a special award. Online aid is a chance to put it back, to put something back, and to plough some of the resources of the computer industry back into helping people, back into our communities as well, I hope, later on. And oddly enough, we were told when we started um, you're crazy, and nobody's going to be interested in this. Computer people are only interested in making money. Well, uh, actually, some of the people that said this were journalists. <laughs> um, hard bitten, cynical lot. <laughs> and <laughs> one of the things I'm very glad to say is that it hasn't been like that. We've had a tremendous amount of help. Two British manufacturers noticeably absent from this show this year were Sinclair and Acorn, who seem to have abandoned the mainstream business micro market. But last week, Acorn did announce a long-awaited successor to the BBC Model B Micro. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the presentation uh, and the exhibition, which is mounted jointly by BBC and Acorn Computers. Last week, in a joint three-day launch with the BBC, Acorn introduced a new range of microcomputers. Called the Master Series, it's a family of five identical-looking machines based around the 1 to 8. An 8-bit machine, which is claimed to be 40% faster than the old BBC Model B and comes with a lot of built-in software. The other machines are versions of this with additional 8, 16 or 32-bit processors under the bonnet. For example, the Master 512, the 16-bit machine, comes with GEM, the icon and mouse-based system from Digital Research. In principle, it offers compatibility with the widely used MS-DOS operating system. An important feature of the machines, and something which the BBC insisted on, is that they can all be made to behave like the old BBC Micro, so that most, but not all, existing software should run. And both the new and the old machines will work together in networks. Brian Long is the managing director of Acorn. Mr. Long, uh, some people are saying it's 8-bit technology, old styling, and uh, parts of a failed business machine that you're trying to launch. Well, to anybody who says that, I'd merely ask them to come and see it, come and use it, come and see other people who've used it. Um, I, I'm not going to try and defend 8-bit technology. I would just like them to come and use the computer because it's very competent. Which uh, market are you going for? It's the education user, it's the small business user, it's the serious home user, uh, the scientist who maybe uses a big mainframe machine, but he also has a lot of things he wants to do personally. A wide range of people who need that small but powerful microcomputer. So it's the end of the home market, the end of the business market? It's not the end of the home market, it's the end of the games market. Brian Long talking in London last week. On this stand, the Japanese electronics company NEC have gathered together a whole range of equipment to show how modern business can use the new technology. For example, this battery-driven microcomputer can be linked using this cellular radio telephone direct to head office. The salesman could send his orders direct to the dispatch office. 
This microcomputer database keeps track of the stock, and this barcode reader here can log items as they're going out. And the executives of the company can keep in touch with world events by using this 24-hour satellite TV news service. This dish can handle up to 20 television channels, anything from English pop to gardening in Italian. The company's new products are designed using this computer-aided design system. The designs are entered in this microcomputer, and when they're finalized, they're printed out on this color plotter here. The executives keep in touch with each other using networked micros. This is the NEC APC3 using MSNet just announced at the show. This can use most of the existing standard network technologies, but when one of them emerges as the standard, then it'll probably work on this microcomputer. But for the executive on the move, the office in a briefcase, microcomputer, a modem, and a miniaturized printer. But one thing we can be absolutely certain, tomorrow's office of the future will be something quite different. Or will it? The Unix operating system was developed 17 years ago for use on mainframe computers. It's only recently become available for micros. But this new version of it on the Torch Triple X is a major launch here at this year's show. Now, with this uh, operating system running, anything up to 50 things can be going on at the same time. But Unix is renowned for being very difficult to use. But have a look at this. What have I got here? I've got my word processing document there, but I want to use the telephone manager for a minute to make a few phone calls. While that's going on, back to the word processing. I'm using right word. Perhaps I need to check the spreadsheet. The figures there are all right. And now I'm going to send my word process document on Telecom Gold. Off it goes. And while that's sending itself off, I'll go back, I think, and make that all-important phone call. Excellent. If you've got enough brain to cope with it, that is. But of course, uh, Torch are a very small company, and it remains to be seen whether many software manufacturers will make use of this amazing front end.